So I have been part of the SQ3 collective for about a couple of years now with Philip Schallkamp. And um, the SQ3 collective gives a lot of artists the opportunity to really express themselves and um, show their work, work in a uh, in form that would not be otherwise available. And I think uh, Perpetual Process fits in that context because Perpetual Process, we, we don't really fit in any specific genre. We we're a collective, we come from different uh, backgrounds. You know, I, I tend, I came from, uh, I had some classical training um, on, on the piano, and then I sort of pursue more of the electronic side of the music. Katie comes from, uh, explain a little bit. A mix. Uh, well, my dad's a musician, so we were kind of raised listening to anything from the Beatles to uh, Bob Seger to uh, the new stuff and then my mom is more into classical and then my brother likes it he used to like his Metallica and all that stuff and then while I was a teen I uh, listened to a lot of house music as well Got it. so kind of a mix of everything you Kevin I uh, started off playing gospel music first and then because of how gospel music is played uh, it kind of forces you to learn various styles and fuse them into one so it's gospel and funk and house and blues and jazz and whatever was on the elevator in the building I was going in that day. So it was uh, many areas of influence for me. Um, for me, I, I kind of come from a from punk rock and industrial music. It was, was kind of my first love as far as uh, as far as playing and performance. But then from there, we kind of branch out into into everything. You know, electronic music is is, is great fun to do and. Uh, and um, you know, up for up for anything.
what I want to say is that songs grow, and I think working with musicians of different background, they sort of go in a in a surprising directions, but it's usually uh, and uh, the outcome is very favorable. Um, you know, the the music I play a lot of different styles of music, and you know, each style of music, each each um, each song itself kind of has its own idea of where it's going to go. Um, uh, there's no punk rock sensibility that I bring into perpetual process. I'm not trying to inject any of my any of my 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 past experience or or musical preferences into any one thing. They'll find their way in if there's if there's room for it, but really the song kind of writes itself and uh, and you know I do my best to 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 help it out. I grew up singing more pop music uh, and then you know the the classics, what my dad would play and stuff. Also some jazz, you know, some Etta James, some Peggy Lee. But I listen to a lot of trance music and stuff. So I'd like them um, long he uh, notes held for a long time, you know, that kind of flowy music. Yes, the gospel it had, it has a heavy influence and uh, a great depth in me approaching uh, perpetual processes music. Um, gospel teaches you how to listen on the fly and how to adjust on the fly. So a lot of uh, playing perpetual processes music is listening and staying out of the way of the other uh, members of the band.
So I think the music took interesting turns in, the, in its history. So initially, uh, where I grew up in, in the 90s, uh, way back, uh, on some of the grunge music, it was very organic, raw, you can say, like for example, Nirvana. Grab a guitar, bass, vocals, and just let's just have a, a sort of a sonic vomit, but in a, in a good way, something we discussed earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So there was more of an organic approach to music. And then you see in a decade, a decade later where the electronic comes uh, electronica music comes in and now you have the you know a lot of this electronica that's kind of goes the other direction it's all computerized and it's all um perfectly synchronized and, and it's pretty much you can have a producer working within their laptop but i realized that what i wanted to do is really to find a blend to find a balance between the organic way of recording music music like it was in the 90s and then that with electronics Initially, the, a lot of the perpetual process was recorded just electronically, but when these guys came in, they really added more of the organic touch to it. Now, obviously, the vocals and then the, the live drums gives them more of a life to it. The way Kevin, for example, records, we just usually record from the beginning to the end. We don't record small parts. It's just from beginning to the end. If we don't like the take, we do it again, right? <clears throat> and so there's nothing, not, there are not that many looped parts in most of our tracks. And even with the bass, recently did the same thing. We, did, we recorded the bass for uh, Hunting Me in one take. We listened to it, realized it's perfect. It might, you know, there's few parts that are not exactly the same and maybe off, but you know what? And little artifacts, it adds some of the organic parts to, to some of these songs. So I think right now, the trick is to really find that, that, that blend right now, how to combine the, the electronics and the organic parts.
What is good music? I think that that's a, that's a difficult question because uh, I, I truly believe that music is very subjective. So what I consider good music, I think, is honest expression. Uh, there's some, there has to be some kind of honesty in the music. The music has to be some kind of a uh, representation of who you are as a person and therefore as an artist. And if that's being translated to, to, to your listener, I think that then you have achieved uh, quality, good quality in music. I don't think there is any definite answer to what great music is. I think it's all on your taste. If you get a, if you feel a certain emotion from a certain song, that's good. Some people will, like Cornelia said, some people will, some people won't. I think it just depends on your taste and what you like and what you, what you, um, what you get a feeling from, you know. Good music has perhaps an, an X factor that, that, that speaks to more people than songs that, that don't have that. Um, but that can come from a million different places. It can come from the, um, from, you know, the skill of the players. It can come from the raw energy of people who can barely play their instruments but just have this magic. It can come from, you know, the energy of the times. It can come from, you know, from it can come as much from the audience as it, as it comes from the, the performance or from the, the composition itself. The best quality music is that that grabs your ear and immediately taps into the emotion that the players are trying to get into. Whether you like rock or not, or rap or gospel or whatever it is, if it immediately touches that feeling and holds your ear, there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs>